Hello, everyone, and welcome to the eighth webinar of Technology Transfer Webinar Series. Today's topic is Maximizing IP Marketing Efforts by Harnessing the Power of Social Networks, which will be presented by our expert, Mr. Tamir Huberman. As always, before we start uh, today's presentation, I would like to give the floor to Luca Escoffier, a project manager of the U-Japan Technology Transfer Help Desk. Over to you, Luca. Thank you, uh, Eva. Good morning. Everyone, uh, for those that are in uh, in Europe, good afternoon for those that are like me in Tokyo. Uh, he is November uh, 8th, 2016. Uh, I would just like to uh, introduce the help desk for a couple of minutes and then I give the, uh, the floor uh, to, to our speaker, Tamir, today. So as you can see from the slide here, uh, this is... Um, uh, it's a webinar of the U-Japan Technology Transfer Help Desk. For those that don't know it, uh, is um, the majority of the operations take place here in Tokyo, and I'm the project manager of the help desk. You have uh, here in the slide my email, so if you want to send me an email or you want to ask for information, uh, if you want to know uh, something more beside what you can already find on the website, please feel free to send me an email at luca.escoffier at eu-japan.gr.jp or uh, you can just simply uh, see the website. But anyway, from the website, you can have access to our resources and also send messages directly through the website. Uh, you can also see that there is another uh, IP link close to the survey for SMEs. So if you belong to an SME or if you know someone inside an SME, please do me uh, and do us a big favor and uh, just share the link because we're running a survey to better the services of the help desk and provide uh, more organized and uh, effective information for the users. Um, please also, if you are not uh, in the mailing list, just click on the, the final link that you see on the slide and you will be redirected to the page on the website where you can register and you will be able to receive our newsletter. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce Mr. Tamir Huberman today and also I would like to spend a couple of minutes as well for introducing him uh, by reading the bio and letting me know uh, what Tamir uh, is doing currently and what he has done in the past. So Tamir is the Vice President of Business Development and IT Director at ISUM, the technology transfer company of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And as part of his roles at ISUM, uh, Tamir is responsible for the new startup company formation in the fields of computer science and engineering. He's also responsible for negotiating research and license deals with companies such as Google, Intel, Microsoft, GM, and many others. Tamir is also the director at InnerEye, observer at BriefCam, and director of IT at the ITTN, the Israeli Technology Transfer Company. Tamir has established a one-stop shop portal for all of Israel's technology arising from research centers and universities in Israel. He, uh, Tamir is further a world-recognized speaker on the topics of social media marketing and innovation. And he holds a Master of Science in Structural Bio Biology and Computer Science and an MBA uh, from the Hebrew University, both of the degrees. Tamir is also a certified NLP trainer from the ABNLP. So without uh, spending too much time, uh, the floor is yours. Tamir, welcome. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Luca. And uh, OK, so everyone uh, sees uh, my first uh, uh, slide. So the topic is maximize, maximizing IP marketing efforts by harnessing uh, uh, social networks. Uh, one word, uh, I actually met uh, Luca, uh, started the uh, discussion with him after uh, an article that I wrote uh, uh, in Technology Transfer Tactics. So for those of you that are interested to read, uh, you can either enter my uh, LinkedIn profile and see it directly or simply write to me and I'll email you the link to the article. 
so uh, Luca al already gave uh, the introduction, uh, so I won't repeat uh, what Luca said, just uh, add uh, two more uh, companies uh, that are interested. Uh, so you see the, the logos, uh, all of them that uh, Luca mentioned. Uh, two of them, uh, in addition, uh, I'm also a mentor in uh, Google uh, Finland, and uh, I'm uh, an assistant in uh, an incubator, a relatively new incubator at the Hebrew University called HU Start for a new startup uh, uh, formation. Uh, so uh, these are just a couple of uh, places I've uh, been uh, lecturing at quite a lot in Finland. Uh, also saw that there are some people from KTU. I gave uh, a couple of uh, uh, seminars in uh, KTU, Kaunas Technology University, uh, Oxford, uh, Singapore, Australia, uh, Canada, United States, and of course in uh, Israel. So w what we're going to talk about today are uh, what are the main top reasons for uh, using LinkedIn. Uh, and we are going to mention four uh, mistakes related to LinkedIn. Those are mistakes uh, that I found uh, in all my lectures around the, the world. And I'll help you avoid those uh, mistakes. And then we'll discuss uh, what are the most important sections uh, that are required uh, to have a powerful profile. Uh, a, power, a powerful profile, as I call it, is a profile that uh, when you want to get in touch with someone from any company uh, that you have never been in touch with, uh, what is the likelihood of receiving a response? So if you have a powerful profile, uh, the likelihood for getting a uh, response uh, is uh, very high. Uh, so I'll uh, mention uh, uh, just the main uh, important sections, and then we'll discuss uh, how to use LinkedIn in groups, at least uh, how we use uh, groups in uh, ISUM. And uh, I'll show uh, a couple of uh, examples uh, that I'd like to uh, share with you. So without further ado, uh, let's start. Uh, so the, the first uh, topic is the top reason for uh, using LinkedIn. Uh, those are, uh, what you see here, are just uh, 10 uh, top reasons uh, that I've gathered. There are other uh, top uh, reasons to use LinkedIn, but those are the main ones. And for those of you that don't know them, uh, this slide is especially uh, for you. And uh, it's important to bear those in mind. Uh, because not a lot of uh, people know uh, or why or how to use uh, LinkedIn. So the first uh, top reason is for uh, jobs and uh, hiring. Actually, LinkedIn uh, was formed around 2002 uh, and went uh, up on the air about 2003. And they had uh, an idea because at the time, the uh, job market uh, was in a very big uh, problem. Uh, the only way to hire employees were, was um, uh, getting their bios from special uh, companies such as uh, Manpower and other uh, big uh, hiring uh, companies. And there was no way uh, to get uh, those resumes uh, until, uh, until people actually were looking for a job. So if someone was not actively looking for a job, uh, you could never uh, find him. Of course, you can look him up, but uh, there was no easy way uh, to search. Uh, so the main uh, reason for uh, uh, forming LinkedIn, and uh, that's the dream that LinkedIn has, was uh, what if uh, everybody uploads their resume, no matter if they are looking for uh, a job or not, uh, they would uh, upload their uh, resume and allow uh, the jobs, uh, the, the employers, to look at one repository of all the resumes. And even if someone is uh, working and is not actively looking for a job, uh, he could actually get an offer and then quit his current job uh, and go to the new job. And actually, the statistics, the statistics uh, today is that uh, at least in the top-ranked uh, type of uh, roles, uh, such as CEOs, directors, and VPs, uh, the likelihood of uh, getting a new job is only for people that are currently working, 
because those are the best people typically, uh, the ones that are looking for a job and they haven't been able to find the one. Uh, that means that uh, they are either not good enough or that they don't really want to get back to the job market. So this is uh, the first uh, uh, top uh, reason. And uh, actually, uh, LinkedIn was uh, very much uh, correct in uh, their assumption. Uh, and uh, although it took uh, between five to uh, seven years until uh, LinkedIn uh, had enough uh, uh, resumes inside the database, uh, today it's the biggest uh, database uh, in the world for uh, uh, professional uh, employees. The second uh, reason uh, for using LinkedIn is for profile lookup. Uh, in uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, you can look up any profile and see the, the face. So if you met someone at a conference uh, and you don't necessarily remember uh, the name of the person, uh, some people remember faces better, uh, and there is a lot of additional information when looking for a profile. Uh, I won't have time to go over the uh, search engine, uh, but uh, uh, if you work uh, correctly with uh, uh, LinkedIn, you can uh, remember almost any profile for anyone you've ever been in touch with, uh, because there are a lot of uh, things you can do uh, such as uh, tagging people that you met. And uh, my personal network has over 37,000 uh, first connections. And obviously, I can't remember all of them. Uh, and obviously, I didn't meet all of them. But this is a very powerful network. Uh, and uh, it allows me to uh, get the message across. Uh, the, first, the third reason uh, is what you see, build professional uh, relationships. And in brackets, uh, you see the word lion. Uh, lion does not ma uh, is not meant for an actual uh, lion, but it's a, a LinkedIn open networker. And this approach is an approach uh, that I would uh, strongly recommend for all of you at least to partially accept, if not uh, fully accept. And what it means is that uh, uh, based on uh, uh, a lot of people, what they have in mind is that they will only uh, confirm relationships with people that they know. And this happens uh, either in old generation type of managers or simply uh, people that uh, uh, do not want to get engaged uh, and confirm people that they don't know uh, so they won't uh, bother them or for various other reasons. The problem with uh, this approach is that uh, if you want to get new connections, for example, in a new country and you don't know anyone, uh, then uh, you'll never get to know anyone unless you start uh, either flying, uh, going to conferences, and all the tools of the old uh, world, which are uh, effective, but they cost a lot. So the approach of a lion means that uh, you uh, do confirm people uh, although you have never uh, seen them. And that way, uh, you can increase your uh, networks uh, dramatically. Uh, this is how I started actually lecturing in Finland and Lithuania and uh, many other places, uh, uh, also uh, Singapore. I never met people uh, from those areas, but started uh, my communication through LinkedIn, and that grew uh, from there. So although you do not have to accept uh, everyone that asks for you uh, for a connection, uh, I uh, strongly urge you uh, that uh, if you see that uh, this uh, person that asks you for a connection is very well connected in a uh, business area that interests you, uh, then it's not only him that is important, but his connections as well. So I strongly urge you to at least partly accept uh, this approach, and you'll grow your network uh, dramatically. Uh, fourth uh, reason, uh, which is uh, mistakenly thought uh, that it's good only for job seekers, but, the, but it's not, is uh, giving and receiving uh, recommendations. Uh, recommendations uh, is not only a way for uh, job seekers uh, to allow uh, the employers to see uh, recommendations on their profile and see who gave them, but uh, it also has a great influence on the search engine of uh, LinkedIn, and if you have recommendations uh, from a very top-level uh, uh, executive, which are high-ranked, 
on LinkedIn as well. Uh, it increases your chances to be found uh, on LinkedIn and uh, similar to uh, the, res the results of any search you type on Google, uh, LinkedIn works the same. Uh, LinkedIn always sorts out the results and if you want to be on top of all the results, uh, then uh, you have to increase uh, your rankings and uh, recommendation is, is one great way. I urge you to receive at least two to three recommendations, uh, true recommendations from people, uh, or either colleagues or employers that you work with, uh, that would increase your uh, ranking uh, dramatically. Uh, the fifth reason is LinkedIn groups. We'll have slides on that uh, in the future, uh, so I won't elaborate uh, too much uh, on it now to allow us more time for questions. Uh, and the sixth reason is to stay updated with colleagues and contacts. And I wrote in brackets uh, mini CRM for, for those of you that are working uh, with uh, CRM uh, systems, uh, you know that uh, the biggest uh, problem of working with any CRM system is that uh, you enter uh, data in, uh, and information to the system on various uh, people and clients that you're working with. And if you are not updating uh, the information, uh, then the information becomes old over time. So you constantly have to update the information. What's good about LinkedIn is that you don't have to update the information about other people. And that means that the network is relatively fresh. Uh, of course, uh, if people don't update their own information, uh, it won't get updated automatically. But most people which are true users and use LinkedIn on a regular basis, uh, update their, their information. That means that your networks are up to date. And uh, uh, I'll have a slide on that later. Uh, you get notifications, for example, when past uh, uh, business colleagues of, you, of yours have replaced uh, a working uh, uh, place and uh, are starting to work in a new uh, uh, place. Uh, the system will let you know automatically and that's why, although I call it mini CRM, it's actually better that, than any current CRM, uh, even the most expensive and uh, most fancy uh, CRM system uh, that there is. Uh, seventh reason uh, are sponsored company updates. Uh, and this uh, is uh, something that uh, I guess uh, most people know the Facebook ads, but LinkedIn has uh, a similar engine uh, for ads. Uh, and that means that you can uh, send ads on your services or your products that you're trying to sell uh, to any uh, individual on LinkedIn. And the search engine uh, is so uh, specific that you can target any CEO in a certain country, in a certain age, in a certain discipline, etc. And you know exactly how many people answer uh, your uh, targeted audience. Uh, so this is something uh, tru truly remarkable and uh, very effective. Uh, and although it doesn't, uh, it's not so cheap uh, in comparison to other networks, uh, it's uh, very effective. Uh, so this is another reason to use LinkedIn. Uh, eighth reason is to strengthen old relationships. Uh, again, when you are uh, a business person and you constantly meet people, uh, you need good systems uh, to make sure that uh, old relationships uh, re remain strong. So I mentioned uh, on the sixth uh, uh, reason uh, the, the, that you are constantly staying updated with colleagues. Uh, this also uh, influences uh, old relationships and past colleagues uh, for uh, getting new leads, again, to uh, selling uh, products or services to collaborate or to uh, find your uh, next uh, dream job, uh, so to speak. Uh, the ninth reason is about branding. Uh, so the, some people have uh, kind of a difficulty with uh, this uh, uh, point because they don't like to uh, sort of uh, brand the, the, themselves. But today uh, we live in a world where uh, ev everyone has a profile and the presence on social networks, uh, all the information is relatively uh, exposed. And uh, uh, LinkedIn is very good in uh, branding yourself uh, and has a lot of tools which allow uh, any user uh, 
to write articles, uh, to write uh, uh, posts, and to bring true value to his colleagues uh, to make more effective business development. And this is something uh, that uh, has to be done uh, on a regular basis. And over time, uh, you, br you really brand yourself and you have a, a network of people that will do almost anything uh, that uh, you request. Uh, and the tenth uh, point, which uh, again is uh, last but certainly not least, is doing business development and marketing. And the dream of any business development uh, professional, uh, I, again, as mentioned, I'm vice president for business development at Isum, uh, which is one of the most uh, successful technology transfer companies actually in the world, and the third that was uh, formed in 1964. So the dream of any business development uh, individual is if you uh, have a technology and you want to get in touch with someone, you need a first response because you're paying for a patent, uh, and the patent costs uh, a lot of uh, uh, money, so you need fast answers. Uh, in most of the tech transfers I've been in the world, and I've been to uh, most of the tier one uh, tech transfers, at least in the United States and many other uh, places in the world, they do relatively passive uh, kind of uh, marketing or business development. That means that they wait for companies to turn uh, to uh, the tech transfer in order to uh, acquire a license or open a, a new startup uh, company. Uh, Isum's approach is different. We have a more active type of approach, and uh, LinkedIn is the dream tool for us, uh, and uh, certainly if used correctly, uh, you can get all the replies on time, and I have a, a nice example uh, towards uh, the end of the talk. Uh, so now we approach uh, the second uh, uh, topic, which is uh, the four common uh, mistakes uh, that I've uh, come, came across uh, over the years when giving lectures around the world on LinkedIn. So the first mistake uh, that uh, is most common is that I uh, talk with people and they say I have a profile and uh, I've had it for actually a lot of years. Some people had the, a profile for five or even 10 years and they say it's a waste of time or money and energy to use and uh, learn or learn how to use uh, this profile. And uh, when I ask those people, can you show me uh, your profile? I see that the, the uh, profile is almost empty in most cases. There is no picture. Uh, there is no information, almost no text on what the person is doing. Uh, and uh, I, I tell them, look, the fact that you have a profile on LinkedIn uh, doesn't mean that it's uh, a powerful profile. And if you do not have a powerful profile, it will not generate any uh, type of uh, result. And, uh, and of course, you can always do uh, a profile uh, better and better, and I urge uh, all of you, uh, if you like, to take a look at my profile, because since I teach, I have to keep it uh, up to date, so there is a lot of information. Uh, you can see how uh, a powerful profile looks like, and I'll uh, also mention how do you know it's a powerful profile. There is an objective measurement for that, uh, which uh, we'll get to that. So. Uh, in order to avoid this first mistake, you have to either yourself build a powerful profile or take a company uh, which will uh, build a powerful profile for you. If you don't have a, a, a powerful profile, you won't get any results, and hence this is the first uh, mistake. Uh, the second mistake is uh, people tell me I don't know so many people, so I can't build a professional uh, network. And that uh, relates to the point I mentioned on the LION approach, the LinkedIn Open Networker. Uh, the fact is that uh, LinkedIn has uh, a lot of ways to get engaged with people that are interested in uh, the same professional areas uh, that uh, you are interested in. And uh, you can get in touch with those people, although you never physically met with them. And that way, you can increase your professional network dramatically. This is a process which takes time. There are a couple of uh, shortcuts on how to build a powerful uh, network. And today, I build uh, profiles uh, in my company, PHI, to uh, professionals uh, and have uh, uh, at least 500 connections in less than a week. This is something that took me 
more than six months when I started uh, working, so there are sh some shortcuts, but most of the work uh, takes uh, uh, more time. So in order to avoid this mistake, uh, I urge to take the line approach and also accept connection uh, from people you don't know, and obviously uh, get connected with everyone you do know, and there are a lot of ways to do it on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, the third uh, common mistake is that I wrote, uh, I hear from people, they wrote to several people and did not receive any reply, so it doesn't work for me. Uh, and uh, again, when I uh, talk with those people and ask them, can you show me uh, an example of an email you wrote to someone? Uh, so in some cases, I see very long emails. Uh, so remember, today's world, people don't have time or energy. They are bombarded from various uh, multiple sources uh, uh, in constant uh, information, and they write long emails to people, again, that they don't know. Uh, and I, uh, in order to avoid this mistake, you have to know that you have to uh, write to someone, especially if it's uh, the first time you write, a very, very precise, very short email. Uh, it has to be no more than uh, two or three lines maximum. It has to have a good subject line, and uh, it, the email has to be very, very clear why you are writing to that person. Otherwise, you're wasting their time, and that's uh, something you don't want to do. Uh, so all of those emails that I saw to, of people were either because they didn't have a powerful profile, hence the people didn't want to get back to them, or they wrote uh, emails that are totally not clear or very long emails. So uh, this is a way to avoid uh, this mistake by writing precise emails, uh, very, very focused, uh, and to avoid this mistake. The fourth type of mistake uh, that I find uh, not in all the places in the world, but certainly in Israel, uh, is that uh, people are working with LinkedIn, are generating results, and they're telling me uh, I'm already using LinkedIn and there is nothing I have to learn more. At least they think uh, in their heart that there is nothing that they need to learn more. I can tell you that uh, I'm teaching uh, LinkedIn all over the world uh, for the past uh, six to eight years, and I'm constantly learning uh, new things uh, almost on a daily or weekly basis. So if I have things to learn, everyone has uh, things to learn on LinkedIn. Uh, this is something you can always do uh, better, and the idea is that if you constantly uh, get better over time, you'll generate uh, much better uh, results. And now we get to the uh, third uh, topic, uh, what are the most important sections that are required in a powerful profile? So uh, for those of you that, are, that know LinkedIn uh, and have used LinkedIn, unfortunately I couldn't check your profile. Sometimes I have time uh, to look at the, the profiles uh, so I have uh, precise uh, feedback on the actual uh, participants of my talk uh, this time. I couldn't see uh, the profile uh, in advance, so I don't know. I, I hope that most of your profiles are accurate. Uh, and this is uh, just a part of those sections. That, that those are certainly not all the sections. There are much, much more. Uh, but those, this is how uh, it looks like on LinkedIn. So uh, when you don't have a section that is filled out, uh, LinkedIn will recommend what you have to fill out, and it tries to do it. Uh, with uh, uh, the level of the importance of what's missing. So if you see it on the left, uh, the photo is the most important uh, uh, part uh, in the profile, and later the summary skills, etc. So let's go over some of the sections. Again, I'm going over just the important sections. It certainly does not mean that the other sections are not important. Uh, but it simply means that what I'm showing you is a must-have. So uh, the first uh, uh, section uh, is the uh, profile picture. Uh, believe me that uh, people have a hard time with uh, putting a good uh, quality uh, profile picture. And since LinkedIn is a very textual uh, and the people would say it's boring uh, in comparison with other networks. 
then the profile picture is one of the most important thing you can put out there because uh, this is what people actually see other than text on your profile. And uh, I have a couple of uh, real life examples from, for problematic images. And uh, those are uh, some that I came across over the years and, uh, you know, gathered. Uh, so people put uh, all sorts of images with problematic uh, backgrounds or they put animated uh, cartoon or animals or uh, there, there is more than one person in the picture or they're not in front of the camera. Uh, this is certainly not a good quality picture. And what you see here are what I mean by a good quality picture. Uh, so what I tell people in my lectures is that you have to put a picture in LinkedIn uh, as if you're going to the most important business meeting you have ever had. Remember that especially for first connections with people that you don't know, this is what they see for the first time. And if they don't see some, something professional, uh, with a professional uh, professional clothes, uh, true background uh, that uh, you know it's not uh, uh, something that w it's not like uh, Facebook. Uh, this uh, uh, creates a lot of positive uh, tendency to continue negotiations or to start negotiations with you. Uh, if they don't see a professional picture, there are a lot of articles written on this uh, that they simply will not want to start negotiating or talk with you. So I urge uh, all of you, and of course, if you have a professional picture, that's great. Uh, but if you don't, uh, please take the time and go and get the professional picture. You will see that it will generate a real effective result. Uh, a second uh, thing relates to uh, profile keywords. Uh, this is something uh, very general to all the sections in the profile, so it's not something uh, particular to one uh, section. And the, the keywords profile is uh, the best, uh, most important uh, thing that is important for the profile. Uh, and the reason is that uh, it's important for the search engine optimization. Uh, first of all, for LinkedIn itself, because LinkedIn obviously uh, wants to uh, showcase the best results at any given point in time, and people are searching based on text. Uh, but you have to remember that uh, LinkedIn profiles are also indexed by Google, uh, at least the, the public uh, part of the profile which in most cases is all the profile. Uh, so in order to increase uh, profile results, what you see here is just a snapshot of uh, Google AdWords, uh, and that can give you ideas to which uh, words you enter into the profile which people actually search. And while Google is not uh, identical to LinkedIn, it's certainly good enough. Simply LinkedIn doesn't have a tool uh, for LinkedIn AdWords, uh, and that's why uh, you should use uh, Google. Uh, so this is just a, an idea of how to uh, choose uh, keywords uh, for uh, professional uh, areas that you work in in order to put them in all the sections in the summary uh, in order to be found, because the idea is that you want to be found constantly. Uh, so the next section uh, after the picture which is most important, and I see constantly that people forget to either place this section at all or forget uh, why, this, uh, why fill out the section uh, anyway. So the summary is the first section that uh, uh, a person will see on uh, LinkedIn when uh, he reaches your profile. Uh, and there are two main different uh, uses for this uh, section. If you are looking for a job, this serves as the cover letter. Uh, but if you are, uh, like myself, uh, a business development or simply want to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool, then uh, the idea of the summary is to explain to potential uh, uh, customers and leads and potential clients uh, why uh, you wrote this profile, why you are using LinkedIn, uh, what you have uh, in mind, or simply uh, uh, also keywords in order to be found. 
So the first part of the summary, this is uh, uh, my personal summary on the left. Uh, you write personal things on yourself uh, because uh, since people read that, uh, it uh, creates a good rapport. Uh, rapport is a connection between people, especially uh, uh, it's good and very important to create rapport between people that don't know each other. Otherwise, uh, again, they will not answer your email. So you have to be uh, to also be a bit personal. Uh, you can see the first line that I wrote, my passion in life is innovation. This is something personal. And then you can enter, as you can see on the second part, uh, actual keywords. So for example, just uh, um, you can see the first line, I wrote names of companies. So uh, Isum is the founder of Mobili. I don't know if all of you know, but Mobili is the biggest IPO in Israel. It's worth almost $10 billion. This is one of my researchers that has built this company. And you can see that uh, on the first line after uh, after the black line, the first uh, dot, you see uh, high-tech startups, technology companies mobilized. So why did I enter this? I entered this because if someone does a search on LinkedIn for Mobileye, which there are thousands of such search searches, they will see me. Although I don't work at uh, Mobileye, but since I'm so uh, high ranked on LinkedIn, then LinkedIn thinks that I'm very uh, important uh, for any of the keywords that I wrote on the summary. Hence, you can imagine that I'm being found on all of the searches that include all of the keywords uh, mainly in my summary. So this is something very important. On the right-hand side, you see some pictures. That's multimedia that you can upload in addition to text to your profile. Uh, the importance of adding multimedia is mainly for people that see the profile. The profile looks much more professional. Uh, if, you if you add uh, some uh, pictures or videos to your profile, uh, and of course, it also contains keywords so you can be uh, better uh, found. So that's our uh, that's the uh, section of uh, the summary. Uh, the next section, which uh, some people again either forget or uh, uh, do not uh, enter uh, automatically, is the skills uh, section. So uh, LinkedIn, uh, and this is how it looks like. Uh, LinkedIn had an idea a couple of years ago. Again, since the uh, uh, the, the profile and the search uh, is relatively boring. So they had an idea, uh, and this idea is uh, automatically uh, activated to all the profiles. That means that if you don't want to have skills, uh, you have to uh, manually mention it on uh, the settings of LinkedIn. But uh, again, not, not all the people uh, know how to do this. And the idea that LinkedIn has is that uh, each individual will enter uh, a list of skills uh, which uh, the person knows, and only people which are actually connected, uh, that their uh, first connection of uh, the profile could say or endorse uh, that skill. So you can see some of my skills here. I entered the startups, business development, strategy, management, entrepreneurship, etc. And what's important about uh, those skills is that, uh, again, the, uh, in the search engine optimization for keywords, uh, there are more than 700 people that uh, uh, endorsed me for startup companies, which is something that I actually uh, really do. And uh, when someone searched for a startup professional in Israel, I'm uh, the first one to be found. And it's not that there are other, uh, uh, I'm the best one in, uh, in Israel because Israel is a startup nation and obviously there are many people that are experts in startups, but simply the fact that they don't know how to build the profile correctly and LinkedIn searches in the, the profile, it will show the, the best profile. So the idea is that if you enter the correct skills, it would help you over time to be found much more accurately. Now, what I see for some of the profiles is that uh, for those of you or for those profiles uh, that uh, did not enter the skills by themselves, LinkedIn will invent skills uh, on its own, and sometimes people have skills like Office, Word, Excel, and uh, various other uh, skills that are totally irrelevant 
Uh, and so I urge you to take a couple of minutes and fill those uh, skills. Uh, the next section is, of course, the experience. This goes without saying. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about that after what I showed you around the summary. But everything that uh, uh, I want to be clear here is that it's not only the, uh, the line of uh, which mentions the company that you're working and your title. It's also important to include text in order to be found. So don't leave uh, the description uh, empty. Uh, add uh, a description, and the more you add, the greater the likelihood you'll be found. What you see below are recommendations, and this is how it looks like. And you can also enter multimedia to any part of your experience. So be accurate, add any relevant experience in order to be found. Next section that is very important uh, is the education. Most people fill it out. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see uh, a mark of the profile strength. So in order to be an all-star, which is uh, the top uh, type of uh, level uh, on, on LinkedIn, uh, it's only people that enter the education, uh, which is uh, something that is uh, very important. Uh, next thing is the profile and spoken languages. So especially for people uh, from, from countries which are outside of the United States, Canada, or you know, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and the like, uh, then uh, people uh, mistakenly uh, mix between uh, writing in English and in their local uh, language. So the idea here is, uh, you see on the left, it's important to mention which languages you know and the level uh, that you know them. Uh, and this is because when people use the search engine, they can choose if the uh, person actually speaks uh, a certain language. And if you speak that certain language but you didn't enter it to your profile, you're uh, kicked out of the results. So it's important to mention uh, languages. That's on the left side of the slide. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see that you can create a profile in any other language. So what I urge you to do is instead of mixing between languages in the same profile, and sometimes I see people write in the summary part in uh, English and part in a local language. For example, it could be in Finnish or uh, in Russian or in my case in Hebrew. Uh, the idea is that you can have any number of uh, profiles uh, for example, I have a, a profile both in Chinese, in English, and in Hebrew. Uh, the next section, which is important for the branding, is entering uh, publications. And you can see those are uh, a couple of uh, publications that I entered. And I have, uh, I think, over 50 publications that are entered. This is something uh, that is very good uh, for you when uh, reaching uh, potential uh, clients and uh, very easily in incorporated and important to, to include uh, if you have such uh, publications. So uh, I promised uh, that there is uh, uh, certain uh, objective measurement uh, of the profile strength. It's called SSI. SSI stands for Social Selling Index. Uh, if you don't know, uh, simply do LinkedIn SSI and uh, you'll get to uh, the link, or uh, you, you can write to me, and I'll send you the, the link directly. Uh, I won't go into that uh, into uh, much more details, because I would need uh, much more time. But uh, what you need to know is this score is from 1 to 100. Uh, if you get a 0, that means you're dead uh, from the LinkedIn perspective. And of course, if you're 100, that means that you are the most active on LinkedIn. I usually uh, get a typical SSI of 90, which is uh, considered uh, to be very high. And uh, you have to remember that LinkedIn sorts out the results according to the SSI. So the higher SSI you have, which is uh, built according to many parameters and changes daily, uh, then uh, you, you have to include that, again, in order to be found. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, things uh, that are related to the score. And again, you can freely uh, see this uh, score on yourself and know how you're doing. Uh, I would urge you to get at least a 50. If you're below 50, it means that you're not active on LinkedIn at all. Uh, so that's for that part. 
uh, and uh, a couple of words on how to use uh, LinkedIn uh, groups. So there are almost 2 million uh, groups on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, those groups uh, have uh, a functionality of the discussion, but the most important thing is that those groups connect between people. And there are big groups and there are smaller groups. And the idea is that when you join a group, you can actually write freely to any person within a group. This is something that not a lot of people know how to do. Again, I don't have time to enter uh, and explain how to do it, but I, for those of you that are interested and don't know how to freely get in touch with people in the groups, you know, you can email me and I'll send you have uh, ready-made uh, instructions for that. What, what I'm showing you on the slide, though, are the groups that I created just for Isum. There are about 10 groups, and I use them as channels. So there is the big group on the top left called Isum Tech Transfer of the Hebrew University. And then there are other groups uh, for research collaboration, computer science, and uh, et cetera. Uh, and what we do is uh, what you see here is just a section out of a technology summary page uh, that we have for uh, this specific technology is uh, dehazing uh, using a certain color line uh, technique. So on the right, you see the, uh, the top line of the summary page and the researcher. This is something all of our uh, summaries look very co colorful, not only textual. And on the left, it's actually the, uh, the same uh, technology. And there are those icons for sharing uh, the, the technology. And you can easily share the technology to any uh, of those groups. And this is how we get uh, constant uh, generation uh, of leads to our uh, technology. This is how uh, we use groups. Uh, today, LinkedIn removed uh, the uh, limit. Uh, it used to be 50 groups maximum. Today, there is no limit to the number of groups you can join. So I urge you to join as much groups uh, as you can. Uh, the last uh, and final uh, topic uh, is some examples on uh, using LinkedIn. I, I only have three examples. So I want to leave time uh, for uh, questions. Uh, so first of all, I want to show you uh, why LinkedIn, uh, why it was uh, for me. Uh, so in 2009, in August uh, the 25th, I had the technology uh, that I thought was good for Amazon. Uh, there were almost 100,000 employees on Amazon. And so I decided I will get in touch directly with uh, Jeff Bezos. At the time, this is how an email uh, looked like. And you can see the original mail that I sent to Jeff Bezos. Only uh, about uh, four days, on the 29th of August, I got a reply uh, to my email from his personal assistant, uh, Alice Powers. And you can see the top line. Uh, it says, Dear Tamir, I hope you don't mind by responding on Jeff's behalf. Although he does read his email, his schedule doesn't always allow him to personally respond. So uh, this led me uh, to, first of all, uh, have a, a very good uh, collaboration with Amazon. But uh, more importantly, it led me uh, to the understanding that uh, LinkedIn is one of the best tools out there to get in touch fast and accurately with people. So this is what convinced me that LinkedIn is the best uh, B2B uh, type of uh, platform. Here is a very nice example. Uh, I was planning a trip to uh, the Silicon Valley, and I wanted to visit uh, Yahoo. Uh, so uh, on the top uh, uh, left, you see I wrote an email uh, to someone called Dirk uh, Riegel, which you see the uh, LinkedIn uh, picture. And I uh, told him, you know, my name is Tamir Huberman, I'm VP at Isum, and I would like to investigate the possibility of collaborating, etc. And he answered me very fast on the same day, and he told me he's no longer working at Yahoo. I should contact someone called April Henry, uh, which I obviously found on LinkedIn. I wrote to her, and uh, she answered me and said, thanks for reaching out. I'd like to introduce you to Ron Brachman. Ron Bachman, uh, which is the head, or was the head uh, of uh, Yahoo at the time, Yahoo Research, and he answered me, uh, the person to talk with is Yoel Mark. And I got in touch with Yoel Mark, again, through LinkedIn, 
and they uh, wrote me back. And you see, it's, uh, it, uh, those answers were in, in a couple of days. And they said, April, Ron, and I just discussed offline. And again, those are three people I didn't know. And Ron recommended uh, we first meet in Haifa before planning for a sunny day meeting. Yoel Mark was the head of uh, uh, and the CEO, previous CEO of Google uh, Israel. She is actually the one that uh, programmed the autofill for uh, Google, which uh, everyone uses on Google Chrome. And I got in touch with her and went to Haifa. And before we started the meeting, she told me, Tamir, I have to ask you, how in the hell did you get my boss to tell me I have to meet you? So that's uh, the amazing power of uh, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, one last uh, uh, example, I had a technology called uh, NewSit. Uh, NewSit is a technology for uh, DVT. DVT is deep brain thrombosis, which is developed in long flights when the blood uh, goes down to uh, the, uh, the legs, and then uh, a clog of blood can uh, go up to the brain, and uh, you can get a stroke. So it's something uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, we have to avoid. And one of our researchers invented the chair that uh, if you have, there was this mechanism where you move your legs, uh, you have to do it every uh, five or 10 minutes. And if you do that, uh, you avoid uh, to receive uh, DVT. So this is the actual chair. And uh, uh, this, uh, the company that made the chair with the researcher came to me and told me, look, we have about a month until we have to get into national phase. Uh, and uh, I said, yeah, but I don't know if uh, companies are interested in this. And uh, I, I know computer science. I don't know. I don't even know what are the flight uh, manufacturer or uh, seat manufacturers, etc. So what you see here uh, is uh, some of the original mail. So I looked up in LinkedIn and found aircraft seat manufacturer experts, consultants. And in red, uh, you can see one of the responses I received from someone called Mark Andre Muller. And he wrote to me, uh, I would recommend you contact aircraft seat manufacturers like Sigma, the Crane, B Aerospace, etc. Uh, in less than one week, I had the reply from all of these uh, uh, company, uh, companies, which are the biggest seat manufacturers in the world, which answered me that uh, the current uh, 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 flight uh, uh, manufacturers and uh, are not getting sued for DVT, and they would ne they don't have they are struggling to survive. Many of them are going bankrupt, and the likelihood for them to replace all the seats in their airplanes is zero. Uh, and having this uh, information in my hands, in uh, again in a week, I uh, got to the patent committee at Isum, and we dropped this uh, patent. Uh, simply because I had a lot of responses from all the companies. So this is something very effective. It was so effective that it entered uh, a book called Mind Sharing uh, by one of the biggest researchers in Israel uh, that was the first speaker on uh, TED in the United States uh, in this book called Mind Sharing. So this is uh, something uh, very important. Uh, this is my uh, recommendation sum summary because time is almost up. Uh, so uh, if you have at least three reasons from the uh, list that I provided uh, of 10 items, then you must uh, uh, make sure you have a good LinkedIn profile. And uh, I also uh, showed and recommended how to avoid the four common, common mistakes, again, by building a powerful profile uh, to increase your net, network and a couple of minutes a day for networking, sharing, and engaging in order to increase the SSI. Uh, the third recommendation is, of course, to make sure at the very least that you have uh, the mentioned imported sections that I showed updated accordingly. And again, it's suggested to have an SSI of at least 50. If you have less than 50, uh, chances are that no one will answer your email and you, got, you won't get noticed. And it's, uh, I can tell you it's not difficult to pass the uh, SSI of 50. Uh, you can, again, accommodation to join and create groups of interest and to share discussions and engage with professionals to find uh, new leads. And uh, this is the last slide of conclusions. Uh, so from my personal experience and the experience of all the technology transfer uh, companies in Israel, I'm also 
a director at IPPN, so I talk with all of the ecosystem. LinkedIn is certainly the best B2B or business-to-business -business social platform that exists today. If you use LinkedIn correctly, uh, the company uh, can gain tremendous value from the new leads and connections with past colleagues for doing business, uh, which is what everyone is trying to do. In order to gain benefit from LinkedIn, you have to work according to several guidelines and also to be consistent. Uh, and generating results take time, so be patient. Uh, for those of you that did not have a powerful profile and are just starting uh, to take LinkedIn more seriously than they, are, they have been in the past, uh, remember, remember that it takes time. Uh, I see LinkedIn as an opportunity generator. Uh, hundreds of people around the world which have implemented my recommendations, uh, many companies and tech transfer are already generating uh, great results by using LinkedIn. And for a technology transfer company or activity, uh, that is a tech transfer like activity, LinkedIn is certainly the best uh, dream tool that uh, currently exists according to uh, all the tools that I check, allowing fast responses which are so desperately needed uh, to decide on patent decisions and also on technology uh, decisions. So this is uh, my uh, lecture. Uh, I don't know if we have a couple of minutes uh, for uh, questions. Uh, Luca, uh, you can uh, take, a, take a look. Uh, but uh, And of course, if uh, you have personal questions that you want to ask me directly, uh, just find me on LinkedIn and write, and I usually answer uh, very fast. Yeah, in the meantime, I, I would like to thank once again Tamir for the uh, splendid presentation. Uh, I think everybody should be, uh, should work and have a, a profile like uh, Tamir's. Uh, it's really uh, an exceptional uh, LinkedIn professional. Uh, and uh, actually, where while you were talking, I tried my uh, index. So I I have 83. What do you think? Yeah, it good? yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I said over 50 is good. 83 is certainly very good. I mean, you are active, you know. All right. That's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> I'm behind you. I'm behind you, but just seven yeah. points. So it's a stimulus. <laughs> yeah, but 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 you know that as I said, it's not constant. It changes daily, and uh, you know it, it, the fact that I have a high score. If I, you know, yeah. stop doing. Uh, activities or finding people, it will drop down and usually very fast. Uh, so we have one question, just a minute. Uh, you recommend yep. accept connection request for everybody in our world. Uh, accept connection request also from hiring agent. Okay, so so uh, the, the first uh, uh, question was uh, regarding the connection. So what I said, uh, I certainly do not uh, recommend on accepting uh, request uh, from everyone. What I mentioned is that if you get a, a connection a request from someone, take a look at his profile. Uh, see, first of all, if he, uh, his profile uh, is built uh, correctly. Uh, you know, usually if it's a spam type of profile, it will be completely empty. Uh, it will have uh, no personal picture or almost no text. I only confirm profiles that are built uh, accurately uh, and are full, and I also uh, check to see if, he's in, uh, if the person that asked me to connect is in an uh, interesting industry, and if he has a lot of connections. Okay, so because the idea is to increase my uh, connection, so uh, take those parameters, and uh, uh, those are the type of uh, people that I uh, accept. Uh, with regard to hiring agencies, again, uh, I don't see anything wrong in getting uh, in touch with uh, hiring uh, agencies, especially if they work in uh, areas of, uh, uh, you know, professional areas that are interesting to you. Uh, I, I always like to keep my mind open for new ideas. And so uh, the question, the answer for, for that is yes, but uh, again, only for uh, profiles that are built accurately and well connected. Yeah, you're welcome, certainly. So, uh, you know, if, if there are more questions, oh, I see another one. 
Yeah, so, so the question, everybody sees it uh, with uh, regard to uh, joint uh, venture creation. I can tell you for, from my personal experience that I've uh, used uh, LinkedIn uh, to uh, uh, hire, not, not to hire, but uh, to find an investor that uh, uh, later opened uh, a new startup. Those were investors uh, from the United States. Uh, so I, I guess that the answer for that uh, is uh, certainly yes. Uh, and uh, I can tell you uh, that uh, we use uh, LinkedIn for hiring not only people uh, in-house for uh, Yisum, but also use LinkedIn for hiring uh, top-ranked uh, individuals for our startup company. Uh, so uh, all of those, uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a people type of platform and a professional uh, platform, and uh, the people are out there. So if you have uh, uh, the right offering and you know how to uh, engage and approach uh, uh, the people either by groups or I didn't have time to mention it by uh, Pulse Post, uh, you can see examples. Uh, on my profile, I recently wrote uh, uh, one of the articles uh, that had more than 6,000 uh, readers and almost 400 likes and a lot of comments. So this is a great way to engage, and, uh, and I write also posts on uh, technologies, and this is how I get investors. So there, there are a couple of uh, ventures that were formed either directly uh, through LinkedIn or later uh, by hiring the team that was the creation of the uh, joint venture. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm, for the moment, I don't see any further questions, but let's give another minute, just in okay. case there are any. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So while, while we are waiting uh, for questions, and uh, even if there are no questions, uh, you, you can uh, join one of our uh, groups, at least the main groups on uh, Yisum, and you can uh, get ideas on what are the type of activities that are going on in the group. Uh, also, we are using the groups for uh, hiring, and uh, since there are so many people, uh, it helps uh, quite a lot. Uh, and also, you can look at the, my profiles and see my activities to see what are the type of activities that are used to increase the uh, SSI uh, and uh, also to get ideas on what are Pulse articles, how to write Pulse articles that generate a lot of uh, traction, uh, because that's something that uh, everyone needs uh, when using LinkedIn. If I may, uh, if there is someone else that is posting uh, a question in the meantime, I would like to uh, ask a confirmation, Tamir, if we can post also the, the presentation online together with the video. Yes, yes. Certainly. Excellent. So for, for everyone, uh, if you will go to the page of the at the repository of the, the webinars, or if you go to uh, the YouTube channel, you'll be able to, to see again the video, so please feel free, free, free to uh, watch it again if you miss something or uh, share it. If you want to send it to someone else that could not join us today and on the website, you will also uh, find the, the presentation as a PDF, so you will be able to download it. Seems you have been very, very exhaustive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, indeed, I don't see any further questions coming up in the chat box, so I guess that would uh, conclude today's webinar. Okay.
if that's okay with you. Excellent. I'd like to thank you, thank you both. Uh, thank you, Damir, for uh, your presentation and for answering all the questions. You guys, thank you for hosting today's webinar. Uh, I would also like to thank all uh, participants for uh, contributing to today's session. And in case you have any further questions, uh, do not hesitate to send me an email, and I'll pass it on to Luca or uh, Damir. So thanks very much again to both of you. Great, great. Thank you all. I hope you all have enjoyed, and uh, you know, good luck using uh, LinkedIn. Thanks very much. LinkedIn and, uh, and, 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 and webinars, because once again, I would like also to remind the audience that we are in touch, at least the three of us organizing the speakers, Brussels, Israel, and Tokyo. So it's pretty much international also this time. So thank you uh, for the help and everything, and uh, thank you. thanks to all the people that, that join us today. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank, you, thank you both, uh, Luca and Elvit, uh, for organizing this and uh, looking forward to being in touch with uh, your future seminars and webinars. Thanks very All much, right. Luca. Thanks, Thanks again. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Great. Bye bye. bye.